Big howdy, it's your boy. Welcome back to the channel. So today, something was popped up in my recommendation that I felt it'd be really cool to react to. It's another Vice video on turning Pokemon cards into a six-figure side and hustle or side income. And I thought it'd be really cool being a part of the Pokemon community for some time now and also trying to dabble in this myself here. So I figured we'll see it from a successful perspective and see what's going on and what they do in their day-to-day -day operations or what they show us really. And we'll go ahead and deep dive in and I'll give you my opinions and my thoughts on maybe what he could do better or if he's doing perfect at it or what I may want to do so if this enjoys you please watch the entire video and thank you so very much and ladies and gentlemen let's get straight into it all right ladies and gentlemen here we are with the video turning Pokemon cards into a six-figure side hustle as appropriately I am wearing Gengar hat in the spirit of a Pokemon video of course why not so we'll go ahead and through we'll dissect this and see what we can do excuse me without further ado let's get straight into the video you know the expression who made more money in the gold rush the guy selling the shovels or the people looking for gold where are the people selling the shovels that's right absolutely wholeheartedly any form of like technical gambling the person selling the necessities or the equipment or the demand is making all the cash sure someone's going to win the lottery but realistically all of the convenience stores and grocery stores and the whole nine they're making a lot of money too because everyone it's the new gold rush. The lottery tickets are the shovels, and the people trying to hit the lottery are, they're the gold diggers. That's it. Like, that's tr that's true with almost anything. We just made about $700 in the last minute. Oh, here we go. This is what we usually pull, guys. Freaking hyper rare. Like, where did this money come from, first of all? <laughs> and why? They see the scale. I see all the foreign boxes. They think we're drug dealers. I'm Brian, I'm a realtor here in Omaha, Nebraska. I am Andrea, Brian's wife, and I'm a sixth grade teacher. And together we import and sell Pokemon cards. A beautiful card, that's a 10 to $12 card. All my favorite streamers were yeah. opening Pokemon. I'm Bria, let's go. I'm retired law enforcement. I'm just here just to make sure nothing happens. I sold over $1 million so far. The market is gonna crash. I made more in Every market has a bubble. We've seen that in the 2008 financial crash when the entire finance industry went under, the real estate industry went under, the automotive industry was going under, went under basically since the 2008 crash. But every market has a bubble, regardless of what it is. The Pokemon bubble will pop. At the end of the day, it's gonna pop. The hype will die off. Influencers will move along. All these other YouTubers, celebrities, whoever, everyone's gonna move along. And then the bubble's gonna pop. If and when it will crash, Five who knows, honestly. Been, uh, I'll make in two years at my 40 hour a week job. I want to be done with all work when I'm 40. It'll happen. We are Pokey. Omaha, bro, Omaha. That rug is sick. Just gonna say it. And it has every Pokeball and every Eevee evolution with my boy Umbreon over mm -hmm. there right now. As Let's in go. Pokemon and then the NE for Nebraska. We import Pokemon cards from Japan. People go to our website, they buy them, and then we just ship them out. When we started off, we just had Facebook sales. We sold like American product at the time. And then we didn't want to be involved with like selling American stuff at a time where kids can't get them in the store. There are a lot of people in America that go to Walmart, buy everything, and then sell it on eBay. That's very frowned upon because they're taking it from the little kids that actually want it. That and that they're selling it at like five, six times the normal price. Trying to buy sets that are maybe like two or three years old. Booster boxes are going for six to a thousand, sometimes two thousand dollars a booster box. The price isn't justified. It's not warranted, especially sets that don't have super chase cards are going for astronomical numbers simply because they're out of print right now, but they're not well sought after sets. But it doesn't matter because it's a Pokemon box that you can't get anymore, so people are scalping it. It's trash, man. Like scalpers just killed the market. Japanese, you can't buy in the stores, so I felt good about importing it because I'm not taking it away from anybody. The quality of Japanese cards is better. They have better printing presses in Japan. A lot of Americans like to collect those, and historically they've been cheaper. I don't know necessarily if the quality is better. I hear this on both sides, but I do like Japanese cards and I do like American cards. I can't necessarily say the quality is better in regards to price, but this dude's dealing it. And if he says they're cheaper, I guess I've they're cheaper. I've also been a Pokemon fan since I was like in kindergarten. 
Pokemon is as big as it has ever become. Pokemon Go makes over a billion dollars a year. The video game market's insane. The anime is on season 30. The card game's bigger than it's ever been. Catalyst for the current market, it's a combination of Logan Paul and other YouTubers making videos that got the kids excited. COVID, which kept people at home and bored. They wanted to collect something. And I think just a few cards sold for a lot of money and people- Here's the situation. So what really started this, let's back this up. Logic bought the most expensive, at the time, PSA 10 first edition Charizard for like 200 and some thousand dollars. That sparked a lot of controversy, but a lot of interest. Then Gary V started talking about collecting Pokemon cards to market his huge with Vinted. Logan Paul got involved. Logan Paul has a massive following, I think like 22 million subscribers. He then started buying up every first edition booster box that he could get his hands on. I think he spent over like $2 million. People see this as the second gold that, rush. It's kind of ballooned. The 25 year anniversary, is that right? Oh, yeah, and if you recall, and it's the 25th anniversary of Pokemon. Uh, this year, Katy Perry made a song about Pokemon. Post Malone made a Pokemon song. It's just hype all around. This is my organization. This is like our booster pack walls. Most people order by the booster pack. The booster pack has five cards in it. This is not Unison, that's like maybe $2.60. Ultra Genesis, this pack sells for four. I'd say people buy like at least 10 booster packs at a time. Moonlight of Alola, so these are a little older. They're discontinued in like 2017. So these suckers are like 10 bucks a piece. So 2017, so like what, four years, almost five years now? And he's selling them for $10 a piece? That's not too bad actually. You know, you can't get it anymore, so that's not too, that's actually pretty reasonable. So that's actually really quite reasonable. I might hit this dude up and buy some packs. Actually, yeah, let me know if you want me to reach out to Pokey Any and buy some packs from them and see what we get. Uh, that'd be super cool. I don't think they have anything vintage, but I'll see how far back we can go. Let's we'll see if we can get some really cool packs. That'd be really easy. interesting. Ten bucks times three. Three hundred dollars. <laughs> so a booster box has thirty packs in it. This is our gun safe of Pokemon cards. We got about $30,000 of these booster boxes in here. The boxes can range from like $60 a box to our newest set, which is about $150 a box. If we opened all of these right now, we'd find some cards with a ton of them. But it makes more sense to sell them to people who think they'll find those cards. So like this one's sold out. This is called Dream League because in this box, there's the Marnie card. It's like a little anime girl. She's actually the girl on my car and that one all right that's actually sick i saw the car earlier but it moved too fast and i get why they used marnie one card that looks really $1, cool dollars all right he's saying a marnie card from dream league i believe it's twelve hundred dollars hang on a second i don't i don't know about that one okay so i looked up the card here that was i believe that is in question i looked it up the dream league set and dream league enhanced unfortunately there is no marnie card in that set i did look up the most expensive marnie card which should be on the screen right here it sells for about 560 dollars somewhere around that it's the most expensive marnie card to date and it's a shining v japanese marnie card that is ungraded so i'm not really sure if that's the card he's referencing but dream league doesn't have a marnie card in it i think he may have misspoke which isn't too big of a deal but i did want to look into that because twelve hundred dollars for a trainer is kind of unlikely even for a, like a secret or a hyper rare gun safe of boxes and this whole wall and then we're looking at about fifty thousand dollars the american card market got really extreme this year it looks like black friday people line up in front of department stores all night when the stores open they rush in it's very much a mob mentality Again, people think that there's like all these ultra rare, hyper expensive cards and you're gonna be a millionaire from it. There is no $300,000 modern day card. People racing to buy $4 packs and then trying to sell them for 30, 40 bucks a piece. It's insane to me. Holy shit. At Target recently, someone pulled a gun out to rob people that bought Pokemon cards. And at that point, Target and Walmart and a few other departments it's never that serious, I'm gonna be honest. And I get you think you're gonna make a ton of money. You might get lucky and pull the Rainbow Charizard, the Shining Charizard, Secret Rare Rayquaza, you know, the alternative art, Espeon, Embryon, whatever Super Chase card you're going after that set. If it's getting that bad for you, you need to learn a skill. Teach yourself IT, teach yourself finance, study. There's so many free resources on YouTube and then there's paid resources as well. Help yourself because going to prison for trying to end someone's life over a four dollar pack of pokemon cards that's not the move bro selling them shelves and target stores have been sold out of both types of cards 
prompting long lines of customers when they're back in stock. With all the chaos of the market, we had to protect ourselves. We spent somewhere between 2,000 and 2,500 on security, worth every penny. We got 12 ring cameras that are always recording. So that's the backyard. That's the basement, that's the window that protects all of our booster packs. Got reinforced door frames. We have an alarm system. We've got a garage that shuts by itself. We've got a door kick that sits underneath our doorknob. We've got everything. Motion sensors. Motion sensors are yes, all over. <laughs> it looks like a drug lord's house. I would not have done that. That is the most dangerous thing you could have done, is literally showcasing your house. I would have told Vice absolutely under no circumstances, will you show the front of my house? The house numbers, what it looks like, the backyard, the neighbors, bro. I know you're in Omaha, and now I know what your house looks like. Worth of Pokemon cards chilling in your basement, and the only thing stopping you, or stopping them, is a reinforced door frame? Bro, unless you have some other secure protection, which I'm not trying to go into detail, Details about but connect the dots here for a second you're really banking on that security system you better have another form of security 2gg 2ggn brian definitely had a lot of side hustles throughout our years together at one point we had 18 reptiles so he was a reptile keeper he did asmr and youtube for a little bit and relaxed tone. you tried to garden <laughs> i tried to garden that didn't work that didn't work um, very well i had a streetwear Ping pong, ping pong themed clothing company, which which sold some stuff, but it, it was kind of a failure. I gotta respect the side hustles, man. I feel them. Sometimes you can try a thousand things and it won't work, but it's that thousand and one, that one project that is gonna work and he found it. The first couple months were definitely crazy as far as like he was spending a lot of time just by himself trying to get it all set up. I need to always be doing something constantly. Like I'll start companies that want like a dollar just because I need to, like for my own mental health. I'm bipolar, officially. You know, you, you go in ups and downs, and when I'm in the hyper mode, I need to be active in doing anything. We're doing a rip and ship right now. We do these about two times a week. Basically, people order. God, I hate rip and ships. They are such a scam. You pay a premium on the packs of cards, typically like two to three dollars on a pack of cards, when you could just buy the card at market and then open it yourself and then make your own content if you choose to. I don't do rip and ships anymore. That's all a scam. Don't pay pre premiums on the packs if you don't us, have to. Rip them open show them what they got and the community has a blast with on top of that you also pay for shipping so you pay the premium and the shipping with per it, pack something good the community celebrates and then at the end of the show we ship them all out to the people right now we've got 72 viewers and uh it's gonna be a lot of fun in the chat people are gonna go crazy so we got eight packs of ev heroes to open up when i was kind of testing the market in late january we bought three booster boxes we spent 150 bucks and we sold that and we made a profit on it it was really exciting so then i bought a thousand dollars worth of stuff and that all sold really quickly and so that's when i spent the twelve thousand dollars that andrew was upset at and that all sold very quickly and there we go guys umbreon v that is a sick umbreon though i haven't gotten um evolving skies or ev heroes i do really want that umbreon card i don't know i'm debating the pokemon videos don't do that well max beautiful card that's a 10 to 12 dollar card right there and a four dollar pack so we're already making good profit we pull heat all day long Every time we got a shipment in, we just upped the ante. We kept every dollar we earned in the company, and we just kept buying more. Oh. Always reinvest into the company. Companies fail because people take the money and then they go out and buy stuff they don't need. Reinvest into the company to help the company grow. You're gonna hit a level where you can both support the company and support yourself. That's really good. Like that, oh, he we did go. that this right. Is what we usually pull, guys. Freaking hyper rare trainer full art trainer card guys that is what we do last pack freaking magic over here where's the flames in the chat give me the emojis we sell between forty thousand and sixty thousand dollars of cards a month and that just depends on what new sets are out so when ev heroes the really popular new set came out we grossed like seventy thousand that month our salary is from our normal job. She's a teacher, I work in an office, so about $40,000 a year. And you showing where you work? Oh my goodness, bro. Each, so $80,000 a year total, and we made that in five months doing Pokemon. Based on sales increases in the holiday, I think we'll probably hit a half million dollars in sales this year. I think we can make like $200,000. I'm about to hop on the phone with one of our best suppliers. He's out of Japan, and he's getting us pretty much all the product we have. Hey, what's up? How you doing? I'm good, thank you. Nice to meet you. It's good to see you in person. This is cool. 
Anyone can buy cars from Japan. If I want to make money on it, I need to spend between thirty and fifty thousand dollars a month to bring in the bulk, and then I can sell them for pretty much market price and still make enough to make it worth it. We met on the internet through basically in January before we sold anything. I spent probably. 90 to 110 hours on Instagram, just DMing people in Japan, and eventually I found my main supplier. The most money we ever sent was $60,000 when we bought everything he owned, just to prepare for the market shift. You guys are a good team. I mean, you answer emails right away, you send stuff right away, you ship something before I even paid you. I'm working on that. The, the bank should be all cleared by Monday, so I'll get you hooked up. America, there's such a shortage of cards. So I imported cards from Japan because there was a ton of those still. But now everyone's kind of caught on. And so now Japan is looking like America. Japanese stores are out of cards. It's looking like there's going to be a shortage no matter where you go. Pokemon was not that famous before. But after COVID, people start collecting Pokemon cards and the price goes up. I got connected with Brian through eBay first and I hope we can help each other. All the items that I buy from warehouse comes into this room. I close the windows because I don't want anybody to see inside. See, this guy's smart. He's not trying to show you every single aspect of his operation. Bro, he has got a lot. Oof. Bro, he is, he is the factory. We have inventory here. We have items worth with around 7 million yen. I'm worried about thieves breaking into my house. I... Yeah, you should be concerned. Definitely security system, and if you can, like, our a security. We like, just get a security 10% from the sales. For the last seven months, I sold over $1 million. I made around $130,000 in profit. I never expect... All right, that's a really big gap there in profit. So he either has to be paying himself and buying product. I really hope you're buying a ton of product to redistribute because that's a really big margin this suddenly disappeared. Like this. Before I started business, I was working in a factory. I was dumped with former girlfriend. In the end, she told me we cannot get married because I'm not financially stable. That made me start this business. It always sucks when you're not in the best place in life and people don't see your dream and they don't support your dream and they don't back you because in their mind, they can't see the bigger picture. A lot of people are really tunnel vision and they're only focused on the here and now. They don't see what the landscape could be. They don't see the bigger picture. This guy did. Now he's selling a million dollars worth of product and now he's pulling in six figure profits. Like, so I mean, I wish all the best to him, bro. I hope he finds somebody that really supports him and he lives happily ever after. It's very important for marriage. I think we can sell another a million dollars if the market is still hot like this. Maybe this year it's the hottest. After that, the market is gonna crash. I'll carry this. So we're at our local Westroads Mall. We have a little pop-up shop we do here every couple weekends. My mom, my dad, Mark, and my brother, Justin, they help us out with security and bringing stuff in and out. Smiles. Love and smiles. And, and smiles. <laughs> Our hours are pretty short tonight, so we definitely won't sell all of them. Our last sale, we sold about $7,000 in the two days we were there. People on our Twitch, I mean, they're from all over the country. We've got a few local people. Other people will get on like Instagram. There's a lot of Nebraska Pokemon groups on Facebook. So we make a post in there. A lot of those people show up. The people at our mall store, they might randomly come across us. They see all the Pokemon cards, they see the Pikachu, and they, they're just happy to find Pokemon cards. That's actually really cool. That's actually really smart too, because he, he probably pays the mall like a flat rate, or maybe they're charged by the hour, but I don't think it's anything insane because they're just taking up a small, a small square footage, but not like an actual storefront. So he probably makes like a ton of money doing this. But if I'm ever in Omaha and I get to catch them on a weekend, I'll definitely stop by say what's up it'd be really cool to meet them and grab a couple packs and see what we could do maybe we could do a live opening you know that'd be that'd be pretty sweet as hot as pokemon is right now i'm retired law enforcement i'm just here just to make sure nothing happens and uh, i'm able to look out just by my experience to see i appreciate that my guy you are in a pikachu costume i don't know i just think it would have been smarter to like dress up as like ash ketchum or something and still give yourself mobility but i could be wrong bad or could go bad crazy what they've done in this short amount of time 
and how much sales that he's had. It's extraordinary. Uh, who wants to buy some cards? My dad's taken me like garage sales my whole life since I was literally an infant, and so I've always been into reselling. We got one of the boxes, and we went over there to open it because he said he'd tell us what we got, and turns out we got a pretty good card. Dang, he pulled the Espeon Alternative Art. Yeah, that's one of the rarest cards out of that set. Good for that guy, man. I'm glad. It's really cool when you pull something like super exciting. It makes it worth your time and money. I've always been into Pokemon, but of course the boom happened again and everybody was on Twitch and stuff streaming their openings. I was like, let me just see what happens if I scroll a little bit. And lo and behold, I found Brian and it's like, oh, this guy lives locally and he specializes in Japanese cards. The fact that he leaned more towards those is what really got me and my guys back in it. That was an absolute swarm. Uh, me and Andrea met at a retail store here. And so we did a couple Black Fridays together. That was very familiar to Black Friday. Absolutely. But we met there and got married after we both quit. They cleared us out already. Like, we sold so many packs. It was chaos. So that was $600 in sales just now. 30 minutes. Or, or less. So profits, yeah. about $200 in 30 minutes. So $400 an hour. <laughs> None of this, like, ever made sense to me. Like, sometimes it still doesn't as far as, like, how it all works. It's yeah, definitely, it's I would say, flabbergasted is the word. My boss, he does like a lot of property investing as his side hustle. So when he heard I'm doing this, he got super excited. And his goal for me is to partner up with him and buy some houses with this money. Buying real estate is the move. Partnering up with your boss, maybe. I guess that's a personal dynamic. I mean, if you trust him enough, you gotta be careful about who you do business with because some people don't have your best interest. They're just looking for fast cash and a fast reward. And after Pokemon ends or we have enough money saved up from it, I can actually apply it to something realistic that will change my life. I was convinced it would turn into something. Like my main goal was to pay literally for our water bill and electric bill. Now I realize I can pave the rest of our future with this. Damn. Here we go, shiny Corviknight, guys, nice. Sopranos bird in the shiny form. Oh my God, we just got, whoa, hold, oh. This is the God Pack. We just got- You pulled Shining Charizard, one of the rarest Charizards in modern set, and you aren't losing your mind? Do you understand, like, how rare not only God Packs are, but the fact that it had a Shining Charizard in it? Like, 600 raw. Japanese might go, actually, for a little bit more. The Americans, like, 600 raw. I don't know, bro. My level of excitement would have been through the ceiling. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it here for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know, are you into Pokemon cards? Are you into selling? Well, let me know, did this interest you? Are you gonna start selling cards or Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh, anything in between? But as always, please remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. I will see you in the next video, which will be Dark Side Scrub, and then we'll go to Ruthless Wrench. Stone IPA just got in the mail. Thank you so very much, and I'll see you soon. You have a good night.